The next day, Mum and Dad went off to work and my brother and me were left on our own again. My brother wanted to play coal mining. That's where one of us hid an apple in the bed and the other had to find it. But I said, let's go and see Old Man Horst and hear another Till Owlglass story. It's Till Owly Glass, said my brother. OK, let's go. And off we went, running downstairs to his door. You knock. No, no, you knock. All right, I'll knock. I knocked. There was the gruff voice again, asking who it was. It's us, I said. Come in, said Old Man Horst. And again, we walked into the little dark room. And this time, it seemed much more friendly than last time. Well, said Horst. What can I do for you two boys today? My brother spoke first. Can you tell us another Tell Owlyglass story, please? Well, sit down, sit down. And I'll see what I can remember, said Horst. Till was getting older. And sometimes he would spend whole nights away from home getting up to mischief. He'd be out stealing apples off neighbours' trees letting dogs loose to chase the cats, and goodness knows what else. Once, after a night of this kind of fooling, he felt tired and thought he'd like to lie down and have a sleep. He was in one of the villager's gardens at the time, a man who kept bees. And Till, who knew every nook and cranny of the village, knew which of this man's hives were full of bees and which were empty. The night was getting cold, so he climbed into one of the empty beehives, snuggled down to get warm, and went to sleep. Sometime later, Till woke up. He heard whispers right next to him. It was two men, thieves. Which one shall we have then, says one. The new one, says the other. No, 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 no. The one we take has got to be the heaviest one. Why? Why? Because the heaviest one will be the one with the most honey in it, won't it, eh? Use your brain, son. All right, yeah, yeah, I get it. Then Till heard the two men going round the hives, lifting them up, feeling which one was the heaviest. So, of course, you know what happened, don't you? They soon found out that the hive with Till inside was the heaviest. This is the one, pal. Come on, let's go. At once, Till felt himself being lifted up into the air and carried along. He could just see each of the two men through cracks in the hive. While the fella behind was looking round, up popped Till, grabbed the hair of the man in front and heaved. <clears throat> then he suddenly, quickly, ducked back into the hive. Hey, said the man, what do you think you're playing at? Leave off pulling my hair. What are you talking about? Said the other one behind. I didn't pull your hair, mm, said the first. As Soon as he could, Till popped up again and gave the same man another great tug of his hair. Mm, mm. Now, cut it out, will you? Said the man, quit this fooling about or I'll drop the whole darned hive. Look, said the other, I don't know what you're talking about, but you're making enough racket to wake up the whole village. We'll get caught carrying this thing, and then we really will be in trouble. So shut up, will you? Till could scarcely stop himself from squealing with laughter. <laughs> A few more minutes passed, and Till watched for his chance again. This time, he went for the man behind. Up he popped and brought his hand down, smack on top of the man's head. And just as quickly, he popped back into the hive. The man was furious. You pig, what did you hit me for? I told you I wasn't pulling your hair. At that, he just dropped his side of the hive and slammed out at the man in front. So then the man in front said, don't you hit me. First you pull my hair, then you lie about me hitting you. I've had enough and he thumped the other chap right in the chest. Next thing, the two of them were rolling on the ground, punching and thumping and biting and kicking. Little Till watched for a while, and just as soon as he could, he was off and away, across the fields, back to his bed, where his mother found him in the morning, just as if nothing 
had happened. Is that the end of that one, I said? Yes, Horst answered. Can we have another one, said my brother. Horst looked at the clock. Well, I'm not sure about that. I've got some things to do. Oh, please, my brother said, go on. Just one. All right, all right. Let me think for a moment. In the olden days, there was a nice thing that people did. Every so often, a farmer invited all his neighbor's children over for a feast on the day after he had killed his pig. And in those days, people used every single little bit of the pig. They ate the tail, the trotters, and they made all kinds of sausages and pies and black pudding. The custom was that the children had the sausages and black pudding at the feast. Mm. In Till's village, there was a farmer who was a terrible miser. He was so mean that when his family had chicken for dinner, he'd sit the children on the floor and only give them the bones to chew. <laughs> well, it was this farmer's turn to kill his pig and give a feast to all the children in Till's village. Of course, one thing he couldn't bear was the idea of giving all these children nice things to eat. So he invited them over, but instead of dishing up all the lovely little treats of sausages and black pudding, he ladled out bowlfuls of cold, greasy soup, the kind of stuff that makes you feel sick just thinking about putting it into your mouth. And as if that wasn't bad enough, he cut big chunks of hard, mouldy bread and dropped them into this horrible, greasy soup. No one wanted any of it. But this mean and horrible farmer stood behind the children with a big stick, forcing them to eat. Come on, he yelled. You thought you'd have something for free, eh? <laughs> well, here it is. Eat up. And there, among all these children, was Till. Come on, Owly Glass. The man laughed and sneered. Fill your face with it, son. Do the world of good, it will. <laughs> Finally, after an hour or so of this torture, he let the children go. He knew that next year, when he said he was going to have the feast, no one would come. And that was his plan. The children all rushed home and were sick for the rest of the day or longer. Blah, blah, till... He was really angry, and he was old enough now to think that no one played a trick on him without getting a trick played back on them. And that's the way it was. Till plotted and schemed how to get back at the mean farmer. In the end, what he did was take four pieces of bread and tie them together to make a cross. He slipped this into his pocket and strolled off to the mean farmer's chicken run. He climbed up on the wall and threw the cross among the chickens. The chickens fell on it and soon they were tugging and heaving on the ends of the bread. But the ends were tied together so the more they tugged, the nearer they got to one another, tugging and pulling and pecking and screeching. This went on and on until four of the four chickens flew up into the tree, still joined together by the bread. The mean farmer heard the racket and came rushing out, thinking it was a fox. He saw all the chickens in a terrible state, losing feathers and fighting like mad. And the four of them were all in a tangle up the tree. He also saw Till sitting on the wall, grinning all over his face. There was nothing the farmer could do but cut those four chickens down and have them for supper that night. All the money he thought he had saved by not giving the children a proper feast, he had now lost by having to eat those chickens. He cursed the children and he cursed Till. Hell's bells if ever I get my hands on you, Howley Glass. I'll have you skinned alive. But it was no good. 
he knew, and of course Till knew, that Till had got his own back. And Till went on sitting on the wall, out of reach of the mean old farmer, still grinning all over his face. <laughs> wow, that Till is wicked, said my brother. And so he was, said old man Horst. Can we have another one, I said. Oh no, said Horst, that's it for this morning. It's time you two went back for your dinner. Well, I said, if you, if you can't tell us another story, can you give us the cure for being bad? What is it, medicine? Horst laughed. <laughs> Maybe next time. Just wait and see, little fellow, he said to me. Now off you go. And yes, off we went. <laughs>